I'm Shannon. And I'm Lisa. And you're listening to Black Tivities. A celebration of all things Black. Black culture, Black history, Black perspectives, and Black panache. Celebrating our Blackness doesn't mean exclusion. Everybody's invited, but you gotta come in and have a seat. So, so let, let the Black Tivities begin. What's good, fam? Welcome to Black Activities. I'm Shannon, and she's Lisa. Yo, yo, I is here. On today, <laughs> I hate it when people say that. <laughs> On today, On we're today. talking about the panache that we put into our words and the things that we say. You know, we can't do nothing regular. We have to add extra oomph in it. Like, that's, that's who we are. We have to. And like just in the phrase, what's good, like it could have several meanings in our community, depending on how you say it. So it could be like, Lisa, what's good? Like, hello, how are you? Or I could say, what's good? Like, oh, really? So you have some important news for me. Like, what is your news? Or I could say, what's good then, Lisa? Lisa? Meaning we about to fight. Mindset. Mine's is different. Because like you could say what's good, but you could look at somebody and be like, you good? <laughs> <laughs> that right there is just like that would send chills down somebody's spine. You, you look at somebody and be like, you good? <laughs> you, we got a problem? <laughs> <laughs> even through a text, you could text that. And even though everything's okay, the person are like probably FaceTime you be like, yo, what's, what's your problem? Like, no, nah, nigga, I was just asking if he was good. Like, calm down. Like, because you got another context. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk about the history of Black folks in the English language. And that leads us to sax facts. As I said last episode, that's my initials S A C. Sax facts. Not sex facts. Sex. It would be neat though. One episode we do throw out some sex facts though. <laughs> For the people that's burning. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Go ahead. My bad. Anyway. Sex facts. Lego. In the antebellum South, it was estimated that only 10% of slaves were literate. But any educated slave was a threat because they could no longer control the narrative that enslavers were feeding their slaves to keep them in captivity. Something about that sounds familiar today. Hmm. Nothing is more of a threat than an educated black man. But anywho, though many slaves could not read or write, music and arts and crafts were thought to be a form of communication between slaves. Quilting patterns could have been directions for the Underground Railroad. Work songs and field hollers were a way to communicate across fields. Ring shouts and spirituals were also a form of communication and expression. And that black panache spawned so many genres of music, by the way, but that's a different conversation. Enslavers were scared about black literacy for several reasons. One, they couldn't reframe the contents of the Bible to make it say what they wanted it to. Two, they couldn't justify slavery by saying that Black people were less than human or permanently illiterate and dumb. And three, they knew that slaves could get the message out about rising up, which is what they did. From 1829 to 1830, an educated Black man named David Walker from New England, published a pamphlet called The Appeal that was secretly distributed by black sailors that sewed it into their clothes to bring it to the South. We're hella innovative. Black panache, baby. The Appeal called for people to rise up and end slavery, which influenced a lot of Caribbean uprisings. There was also The Liberator, published by William Lloyd Garrison, a white abolitionist that had American enslavers shook. And that's where these anti-literacy laws started popping up in the early 1830s that made it illegal for enslaved people to read or write and for people to teach them how to read or write. 
However, even some enslavers broke these laws because they needed the slaves to help them run their businesses, which required literacy. But once we gained some literacy, it was on and popping. Sarah Roth, a history professor and creator of the Nat Turner Project, said, Literacy promotes thought and raises consciousness. It helps you to get outside of your own cultural constraints and think about things from a totally different angle. The anti-slavery movement began, which led to the Emancipation Proclamation, which led to tons of Black schools being open, which led to an almost 70% literacy rate in the Black community by 1910. That rate continued to go up, and by 1979, the literacy rate of Black Americans was around 98%. Today's literacy rate is hard to find, but I did find a stat from 2012 to 2014 that said that 23% of Black adults in the U.S. are considered low literacy, which is an interesting fact. But that's sex facts. All right, so Lisa, why do you think that after being on the rise for so long, like I talked about with sex facts, that the literacy rate in our community might be going down? I think that it is because of electronics, the devices that we are fortunate enough to have, such as the iPhones, the Samsungs, droids, whatever, you know, tweets your little boat. But I think more or less is the expectations of we have someone to do it for us versus us sitting down and actually have to read and figure it out. We don't have to use our brains as much. So mm. me personally, I have to say again, it's, it's just the way of the world nowadays, electronics. I can look at, okay, when my oldest daughter, um, she's 20, she's going to be 21, when she was younger, there was a lot of like books that I read to her. Like we didn't have, she didn't walk around with a tablet 24 seven. So that resulted in her talking early. Um, she was talking before she was walking. But when I compare her to my youngest daughter, yes, if you ever encounter, you know, my youngest daughter, she is a character, but she does come up from that okay tablet electronics i'm pretty sure she you know downstairs with a laptop in her lap right now <laughs> like we have <laughs> devices all over the house so i didn't catch as much grief when i did hand my older to a book and say hey let's read this or they was excited about bedtime stories whereas now like I got to damn near jump on my youngest. Like, yo, we got to read this book. And she like, I don't want to read the book, bro. <laughs> like, I want to read it. So I, again, I think it's just, and then the expectations of the world nowadays too, where, I mean, no one really, I mean, you can just put about anything on a resume nowadays. As long as they're able to like pick certain words out of your resume, then they'll put you in this little category. Like, okay, yo, we'll interview them because whatever they put in their resume, it seemed like it's like the job description that we're looking for. So that's just my opinion. Well, as an educator, I can say that it is a struggle with the electronics in kids. Like it's a struggle to actually get them to think for themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't want to think. They don't want to look for nothing because everything is just like Google it. Shit, I don't want to look for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't like looking for stuff, but I'm the first one. Like, if somebody posts a question on social media, like, how do I find so and so and so? And I'll be like, why don't you just Google it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't want to read books, though. So we have to, like, you know, do cartwheels and put on a circus in the classroom to get people to pay attention and learn something these days. I also think that we don't know our history mm -hmm. and, you know, we're kind of getting away from the importance of it. It's not 
a priority in a lot of our Black households like it was back then. Mm -hmm. But people forget that people literally died so that we could be able to read and write. And they forget that that is what helped us get to where we are today. Right. So I still am a strong proponent of, you know, knowledge, having all the knowledge that you can, that is powerful. Right. And I think it's more more on us. Like you being an educator, I know you probably see this, but it's more on the parents as well to make sure that we're assisting you guys to say, yes, you read at school, but you, when you come home, we need to, you know, stay on top of this and, kind of build on this whole literacy gaining type thing that's going that needs to happen because again once kids leave school please say that louder for the people in yes the back. <laughs> because again like once kids leave school they like that's it you going in there get your tablet going back there i'll feed you in a minute so right. it, it's just still um it's, it's important for us to make sure that we do continue this on especially when kids go home do challenging things to make them use their brain. Something small. What makes a difference with kids coming into school, even, you know, at a young age, is whether or not their parents had conversations with them and whether or not their parents mm-hmm. read to them. It, it right. starts that gap if they haven't been right. read to, if a tablet is raising yes. them. Yes. Blessing and some of the stuff that be just be popping up on them tablets. That's why yes. I got a. I know YouTube. I even limit myself on YouTube. I can't. <laughs> the videos that pop up, I'm like, yo, like really, like this is what you, this is what this is what you looking at. Mm-mm. So I have to with me again and double back. I just want to say it is the electronics, and then it's on us to to. Teach our children the importance of knowledge and the importance of literacy and, you know, what we can do with that, with, you know, those intricate pieces, what we can do with it when it comes to our future. If you can read, you can learn anything because there is a book for everything. Right. All right. Well, let's talk about code switching. Do you code switch and do you think it's necessary? Code switch is necessary. We have to. I don't care what anyone says, whatever you do, there is a certain way to where you do have to code switch. And my code switching could be different from your code switching. But sometimes everything isn't appropriate. So it's like you got to weigh out the situation. You got to weigh out what's going on. So I say yes, I do, depending on the situation. Yes, I do especially at work. Now you're in customer service. Yes. So let me hear, let me hear the um, work Mona Lisa. Oh, especially when I'm answering the phone, when the phone light up, I'm like, here's my time to shine. So any other time you call my phone, you call myself, I'm like, Hey, hello. What's up? But with me, I'm like, hello, this is Lisa. Thank you for calling. So-and-so, so-and-so. How could I assist you today? Oh my goodness. Well, I do apologize if that is happening. Um, let's see. Let me gather some more information from you to see what more we can do to assist you with this and possibly find any other opportunities that can keep this from happening in the future. And then they go on and on and on. <laughs> but what you really want to say is what? Like, bruh, <laughs> you done gave this person all your information and then you called me cussing me out. Because the person I went and then did some fraudulent stuff, and then you want me to be calm. Okay. Okay. I'm being <laughs> calm. Okay. 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 I'm going to help you, but we're not going to do too much cussing. And I ain't got your money. But I'm sorry. Shouldn't people just accept us for who we are? Mm-hmm. Should we have to coach? Yes, we, we have to. I think it's necessary we have to because, again, like we can't. With our culture, we do have some ways that we're kind of out there and it's just not accepted. And some of the things may be inappropriate. So I feel like it is necessary to wear. Don't don't be too dramatic with your code switching. Just just keep it at a at just a regular level. 
But we could take it deeper, though. Like, who defines inappropriate? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what would Jesus do? We play in by somebody else's rules. This is true. Somebody else sets the standard for what is, quote unquote, appropriate. appropriate. But you know, but not. I mean, okay, go about, okay, what's appropriate for you? Are you going to be at work asking who the hell did this? Or are you going to say, hey, <laughs> you're going to be appropriate. And you're going to say, hey, if you don't mind me asking, you know, who task does this belong to? I mean, but that's not me anyway. So it wouldn't even sound natural for me to say something mm. like that. Girl, it free flows out my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it free flow. It's natural for me. I'm like... PG-13. PG-13? Yeah. Well, we already know my rating, so we can move along. <laughs> my coworker <laughs> told me I was a PG-13 cusser. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard you cuss, though. I've never heard you Because I really don't. Yeah. I have to be, like, really, really, really mad. Oh, my gosh. And I don't get like that very often, because I'm... Like, what pretty, level like, mad? Like... Like, like, so, like, you walk out of the Target and you see somebody just hit your car. Yeah, I might say something. Uh, oh no, I do know though. One thing though is universal cussing. Mess with our kids. Oh, oh yeah. It's Mess a with our kids baby. and see what happens. It's a problem. I ain't no code switching, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it does not exist. Say something, mess with my children. That's that's the quickest way to get me angry. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like code switching is very necessary. It is. It's very necessary. I guess depending on your personality, it's more of a reach than other people. No. Also, it's just that we add so much panache to the English language. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have phrases and words that we use and it seems like there are a ton of them right like i can think of some that were used back in the day and then some used you know in our time and they're different but Mm -hmm. my grandma said this the other day she said well i'll be john brown john brown who is john brown I think John Brown is an abolitionist. Oh, you know what? Never mind. Delete that. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember my grandparents talking about dating people, and they don't say dating, they say court. Is it court? Yep. You over there courting? Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And and I remember my granny used to come through whenever my cousins were courting or trying to court. And uh we referenced this uh one time we talked about how we give, you know, just random people nicknames. Oh, we sure and do. she would come through and she said, You better leave them waterhead girls alone. <laughs> like, why are they waterhead? I'm sitting there confused. I'm like, did they go swimming? I I don't know. But- <laughs> I have no idea, but the nicknames, uh, we had major nicknames. Did you have a nickname growing up? I didn't have like a set nickname. Like my family called me Shan, Mm -hmm. but I didn't have like a nickname that the community knew me as. But I know my daddy, his nickname was Cool Breeze. Cool Breeze, look at him. Yeah. Okay. But I know he talks all the time about his teammates because he played football Mm -hmm. his teammates and their nicknames Mm -hmm. you know and they'll be like talking about somebody like oh you know um peach's nephew see peach's son and everybody knew who we talking about right right Mm because they probably didn't even know peach's real name right because everybody calls her peaches right and see Again, everybody have that little nickname. Uh, let me share. Let me share a couple with you on my side of the family. My brother. Hope you don't get mad at me for this one. He was <laughs> born with a, a extremely large dome, and they called him Buckethead. 
even to this day, when I go to family events, they ask me where old Buckethead at. <laughs> um, my nickname growing up was Lisa Gal. That's my aunt. My aunt Jackie gave me that. My aunt Jackie. I feel like she she's like she's like that auntie that we talk about nowadays. I feel like my aunt Jackie was like she was like the official name giver because uh, she gave everybody you know a name. Uh, her daughter her, her daughter name was a uh, Cookie Cookie Jones. Oh, Cookie's another yeah, popular cookie. one. Mm-hmm. Another thing that I noticed we do is that we will add a s mm-hmm. on the end of everything. Mm-hmm. This is true. Like, it's not Kroger. It's Kroger's. Mm-hmm. That's where we going. Costco's. Yep. That's mm-hmm. where we going. Mines. Yes, mines. Mines is a word. I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> you can go debate your granny. I don't care. Mines is a word. It is mines. I mean, also, we got phrases that mean the opposite of what they say. Like, if you hear somebody say, you got the right one today. Mm-hmm. What they really mean is no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> right. Beware. You got to you about to get your butt whooped. Right. <laughs> Just stay away. Or if somebody tells you do it then, don't do it. Don't do it. Another thing that I hear people say all the time, like we constantly describe stuff as being good as hell. Mm-hmm. But that's like opposite. It's like an oxymoron. Good as hell. Remember the old school good as hell? That's fire. <laughs> yeah. You say that's fire. Oh, those shoes, fire. And then, but how you spell it though? <laughs> F-Y-E. There we go, baby. You know. <laughs> you know it. You know it. You gotta it. change the spelling. We can't ever spell anything <laughs> yeah. the way it is grammatically spelled. And then we run words together too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like finna. That, that's you know what? <laughs> that like we need a frame. You know how you go to a, your grandmama's house and she had a white Jesus on her wall in the frame? Mm-hmm. We need to put finna. We need to frame <laughs> finna. Because that right there is the universal word for all African American people. Where are you going? I'm finna go to the store. I'm finna go to work. I'm finna go over here and see what they talking about. I'm finna go catch these sales. She finna catch these hands. It just goes <laughs> on and on and on from there. <laughs> but I wonder like how white people feel when we talk to them, like we would talk to each other because we don't speak grammatically correct. And it's not because we don't know the right way to say it. Like, Especially, like, black women are some of the most educated people. Yes. We just like to throw a little panache on Mm -hmm. it. Like, I teach language arts, but I'm constantly saying, you know, I be like. Right. Or they be like. Right, right. I know how to say it properly. But it's just, we just relax when we come to communicating. It's not a big deal for us. Right. But I wonder if they think that we are stupid. Yes, and that's what I was just about to say. But what's unfortunate is we have that that image on us because we talk this way or because we do certain things, then we aren't educated or we aren't on a level to where we can be, you know, among all other people. Hence why we have to code change or switch up. It's not fair, but I mean, we have to. We, we, that's something we have to. And to sit there and talk with another African-American or someone that do have that panache or that slang, and there is a Caucasian person there, of course, they're going to be like deer in headlights until they start really, <laughs> you know, figuring it out. And then you, you're presenting that awkward moment where they're asking you questions like, what does the bomb mean? And then they just randomly, you know, use it and makes it awkward. So... But here's the thing, though. The kids are saying what we're saying. Yes, they are. Like, our slang becomes Mm -hmm. pop culture terms. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've I've heard these little white kids and Asian kids talking about something's cat. Yes. Or something's lit. Yes. Like, they are trying to talk like Mm -hmm. us. And with us trending, 
Do you think that's a good thing? Do you think that us sharing our flair, is that a good thing? Is that positive when it comes to other cultures? I don't necessarily look at it as positive or negative. I just think it's par for the course Mm -hmm. because everybody else steals everything from us. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, it's it's normal right now. Now with that, you say everyone steals stuff from them. They are borrowing. Let's just say they're borrowing. And I said borrowing. Okay. I said it how I said it. Thank you. So, (laughs) <laughs> when it comes to them borrowing the culture that is trending, which is us, and it comes to them using the N-word, do you think that, I mean, that's just them just, you know, they're just experimenting, they're borrowing, they're just experimenting. That's not a bad thing. No, ma'am. Yeah. We don't do that. Yeah. I don't even use the N-word. I do. I don't look at people who use it Mm -hmm. in a weird way, like black people who use it, but I don't use it myself. Mm -hmm. I find it like, okay, yes, I do use it. And if, if, if I, if this sounds like kind of hypocritical or whatever, like, let me know, please. I do use it. If like a slang, like if I, like if I'm around one of my people and I'm like, Hey, what's going on? You know, like it's normally come, it may flow out. But if I'm somewhere and I'm talking to someone that is not black, then no, I don't use it. But if they turn around and they feel like they're comfortable enough to use it in front of me, oh, baby, I'm not going to be nasty about it. But I will inform them that, no, that's not going to fly with me. Like, that's not okay. And the reason why I'm like that and the reason why I teach my children that is because we don't walk around using other you know, slurs or terms or anything like that when it comes to other cultures. So I feel like the same respect should be given when it comes to us. And don't 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 get me wrong, you they can say whatever it is when they're among their culture, they can say whatever it is they want to say because they have to live in that skin. And they do. Right. But with us, and you do. don't have to live in my skin. You don't know the effect of that word that it has on me. Just like I don't know the effect of whatever word, you know, that you know you may find offensive may have on you. So that's that's my whole standpoint on it. All right. Well, I got a little black activity for you. Okay. It is called What You Said. Okay. Let's get it. So Basically, I'm going to ask you some questions. They're all related to phrases and the way we talk. So you have to answer it the best you can. All right. I'm going to answer how I answer it. All right. Finish the phrase. If you're feeling froggy. Then motherfucking jump. And what are we talking about when we say that? If you're feeling froggy, baby. (laughs) You you got the courage. You you up in my face and you talking crazy to me. Since you got all this courage, come on, baby, and finish it out. Whatever you whatever however you feeling, let's go. Come on. If you feel like you need to lay hands on me, lay hands on me. Let's see. Let's see what the <laughs> outcome would be. I have never actually used that phrase. I did. I use it on my kids, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> He looked at me like I was crazy, and then I just went somewhere and sat down. Okay, it's probably a, a story behind that. And then I went and sat down like, okay, that was so unnecessary. <laughs> he was being extra. Yeah, that time I was. But anywho. <laughs> Who the heck is Boo Boo the Fool? You know what? <laughs> Boo Boo the Fool is a stupid mf okay? Like, a clown. Okay, you know how people get, like, fake J's or fake tennis shoes or they feet be real big and they tie them real tight? I imagine Boo Boo and the Fool sitting in the corner with, like, a polo shirt that's too little. You know how you put a polo shirt in the dryer too long and it'd be, like, hiked up in the back and it shrink and they had, like, khaki pants on and they had, like, you know, like, the braided leather belt that be stretched out 
and they have like a clown face. I don't know why I have Boo Boo the Fool vision like this. And then they just out here just doing the most stupid stuff. Like if it's a female letting the baby daddy use her car and he driving around acting like Jody. You know what I'm saying? And then he come pick her up late for work. That's Boo Boo the Fool. A follow-up question. Who ain't Boo Boo the Fool? Me. <laughs> Motherfucking me. <laughs> That's who I ain't. Try me. All right. So if you want to compliment another female on her hair, what might you say? If I see it, I say, baby, yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Who did that? Oh, they show out. Yes, yes. That, that's how I am. One of my favorites. Okay, hair. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me tell you something. My nine-year-old does that to people. If she, if she sees something that, that's good, she's like, okay. I see you in your little shoes. Like, she, <laughs> she <laughs> says that. Like, if anybody, if she comes in, she's like, okay, I see you. New outfit come through. But hey, the way that we express ourselves, I'm talking about, we need an award for how comedic we are because we are hilarious. Not saying nobody else is funny, but we are hilarious because we can make uh, a, a joke out of any situation. Next question. As a child, let's say you're riding in the back seat and you're hungry and you tell your mama you want to go to a restaurant. I what already might be know. your mama's response. I already know. And let me tell you, I hit her with this. I hit her with this recently. We got food at home. <laughs> she thinks because she older. Oh, you at my house? Oh, you in my car? Oh, you need a snack? Is that what you said, Pearl? I got snacks at the house. I just went grocery shopping. It's bags of uh, chips on top of the refrigerator. It's, it's food at home. You got McDonald's money. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's another one. Did you ever try to prove them wrong, though? Like you did have a couple dollars and they still said no. <laughs> like they asked you. Because that happened. I had my I had my two fairy money. And she was like, you got McDonald's money? And I pulled out my three or four dollars I got. And she still drove home. I was so mad. <laughs> I was so mad in that backseat. My mama had a, a, a cutlass. It was like a, a beige cutlass. T-top. I just knew it. I just knew we was finna go. I, I remember that. She she was playing Key Sweat, Make It Last Forever. And I remember her turning the music down. You remember all the details. Girl, yes. Well, what about if somebody is doing too much? What's your response to that person? I will come out and say, especially a co-worker when I'm at work, baby, you're doing entirely too much. You need to calm down. I feel like there are lots of possible responses to this. But what about you, though? Um, I might say, get your girl or get your boy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You play too much? Yeah. Yeah. It depends on what the what's actually happening and what context it is. But you play too much. Mm -hmm. I've heard people, I don't use this one, but I've heard people say, who mans is this? Or get your mans. Yep. yep. I tell my kids they're doing too much all the time. Yeah, I do too. Or they're being extra. Extra. That's another one I yeah. use. I, you know what? I use that on a regular basis too. Extra. All right. If somebody's telling the truth, how might you respond? In other words, like if somebody says something and you're like, man, that's that's true. Like, well, he, here recently, like they they a reply back in text form with a 100 symbol, <laughs> the red yeah. 100. What about facts? Oh, yeah. You ain't never lied. That's a good one. I ain't used that one in a long time. Even amen or OK. Preach. 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 Yes. <laughs> Um, the last one, what does one monkey not do? Stop the show. <laughs> but we need to research that, though. That made me need to be a whole nother episode by itself, because that one do sound suspect. I don't know. <laughs> it does sound <laughs> But anyway, one monkey don't stop no show, so we need to continue with Lisa's pieces. <laughs> <laughs> you see how I transitioned That was perfect. There? You know what? That was perfect.
with that, I present to you this piece, <laughs> coincidentally called Perfection. And here we go. Perfection. Everything has to be perfect. And if it doesn't go perfectly, I mean, if there's one hiccup and no water to replenish the false wise tale, my anxiety reveals its confidence. Unwanted emotion appears and it's just as worse as the people who dislike me for my attempt of perfection. I mean, I try to speak clearly. See, my goal of perfection screams Virgo. My dream of walking on clouds, hiding the sassy cigarette pouch toting auntie. You know that pouch with the metal snaps and that same lighter in the pouch pocket? That combo was perfection. Even though that auntie didn't speak clearly, she still speaks to the inner me. I mean, I may not speak well, but I grew up thinking that the perfection, the perfect combination of things that can kill you was an example of organization. I twirled a metal object between my fingers, not knowing it was for measuring marijuana. That was a fidget spinner for 80s babies. <laughs> Enough about me personally. As much as I want to sit here and explain Mona's lack of control of not following love and the overbearing extreme of niceness, even when the brain screams, smack that hoe. I mean, well, my expression shorten and I talk it how I walk it and act like people who are around me, even those who could give two Dalmatians, which triggers the Criela de Ville in me. Even I smile, though I'm phenomenal. I look phenomenal in my polka dots and red lipsticks. I speak well, boomeranging these men's hearts while teaching my offspring that maybe taking a temporary persona of that great Jacqueline it's okay to crush their hearts before they do. They do it to you. Now, look, just speak well. Your perfection is understanding that perfect is perfect, but underlining the vision of learning you. You may not totally conquer your anxiety, but redirect your truth. You setting up developing your own plan to be planned out and to be neat at peace because love is learned at its own pace and being a parent is far from being overrated. So teach, understand, you are perfection even though you may not speak clearly. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, that's all we have for you today. If you are loving Blacktivities, Please don't hesitate to rate and review us in Apple Podcasts. You can also join us on IG at Blacktivities Pod. Links are in the show notes, which includes all the historical resources we used as well. So on the next episode, we will be talking about dating while Black. Single folks, stand up now. That's your time to shine. Now, I will also tell you to look out on the IG page where we're going to be asking some questions. Okay. So until then, thank you for listening to the Black Activities podcast. Kings and queens keep doing big things. Mm -hmm.